tight because, again, you're looking at an intraday scenario. You're not necessarily looking to hold it overnight. Sometimes you get lucky and you can hold overnight, and that's cool. You go ahead and you do that. But in most cases, you're not. You're just trying to pick up, on average, 25 to 50 cents intraday. That's all you're looking to make on these um, resistance high and support low entry points. I'm just keeping it real with you. I'm keeping it honest. You're looking to make 25 to 50 cents. So your stop loss is always going to be wider than what you're looking to make. Nine times out of ten. And that's okay. Risk to reward ratios is a lie. And uh, it doesn't work. Alright. Just FYI for you. Take my word for it. Okay. Now, the next thing here that you're going to look at is that you have both of these here. So you could actually literally go in and put two tickets in, one to buy at stop limit here, one to sell short stop limit here, whatever one gets triggered first, the other one acts as a stop loss. You can do that. But here's the flip side of that, or if you want to call it the downside. There are some days where both of those prices will be triggered intraday. <laughs> All right? So unless you're you know moving quick and nimble, uh, you, you, you might get st stopped out on both, and now you have a double loss. So only do that, only place both of those tickets if you have the time to sit there in front of the screen. So as soon as that short's triggered, as soon as you make money, you know, you're looking to, to, to you know, get out, okay? And get ready in case the thing reverses, and then you go long at that point, okay? Remember what I said. The secondary signal can be used as a, as a day trading mechanism. It's designed that way, okay? So if you're going to place both tickets because you have both a positive and negative PPT, you got to sit in front of the screen. There's no other way to do it. You have to sit in front of the screen. You don't need to do that on the pulse wave um, signals, but you, you must do it on the PPT signals if you're going to take both trades, okay? Me, myself, because... I don't like babysitting the market and sitting in front of the screen all day for that reason. I always trade with the trend. Me personally, on the secondary uh, trade signals, I always trade with the trend. There's an exception, though, that I will not trade with the trend. And that brings us to the next thing on our report. Our next uh, four boxes, which is your positive and negative swing VIX trend and market depth. Let's start with the uh, positive and negative swing VIXs. Got a lot of amazing questions regarding the positive and negative swing VIXs. So let's address it. First of all, your positive swing VIX is a sentiment indicator. But it's more than just a sentiment indicator. It's also a trend following mechanism. Okay, It sets up your positive and negative trend channels. A trend channel is a, situ a situation in which a security is trading with its trend and trading with the positive price action money flow like it's supposed to. So what happens is when a security gets starts to operate outside of that trend channel the swing VIX is very uh, sensitive to pick that up and it can gauge sentiment and order flow and it looks at the spread different uh, differentiation between the bid and the ask and the market depth and it looks at a whole bunch of things and, it, and it's, it's pretty uncanny in timing turning points. Now it's not perfect. Sometimes it'll give not a false signal, but it gives real signals. But the, but it leads the security by three to five days. Now I have seen it. The longest I've ever seen it in the past uh, ten years is where it actually led the security by two weeks. That's that's more rare. The swing VIX usually is three to five days out. All right, it's a forward-looking indicator, and it's it does its job extremely well. When you get a positive swing VIX, it means that the market is ready to turn bullish, okay? Doesn't matter if it's an up or down market. If you get a positive swing VIX, that market is ready to break out. Make no hesitation about it. Likewise, if you get a negative swing VIX, 
it means that the market is ready to turn south okay doesn't matter if it's a bull or bear market you get a negative swing VIX you better look out below straight up so that means if you're long you better consider covering likewise if you're short and you got a positive swing VIX you better think about uh, uh, covering that that short these are very powerful indicators okay you need those in your life all right so this is how you read this let's find one that gives us a positive swing VIX so we can uh, take a look at it all right let me move this up here let's see uh, uh, let's take um, which one which one let's take the British pound British pound okay British pound Thursday is giving off a positive swing VIX a positive swing VIX as we have said it means that the market is ready to turn north doesn't matter if it's in a bull or bearish trend or bullish or bearish market you got a positive swing VIX the market is saying I want to go higher okay regardless period well let's look at it got a positive swing VIX right the trend is up it's bullish and the market depth reading is also positive or bullish market depth is our econometric model that takes into account all fundamental analysis remember I talked about that in the beginning of the video all fundamental analysis everything that can be known that is fundamental in nature whether it be micro or macro economic influences that influence a security is being accounted for in this indicator I repeat that this market depth indicator is an econometric model of every piece of fundamental data that is already known or that is being anticipated to be known in the near future in a securities price under this market depth you're going to see it takes into account the commitment of traders reports I talked to you about it looks at financial statements and K1 reports and all that stuff and it looks at analyst projections and it looks at price to earnings ratios and every piece of positive or negative news about a security whether it be fact or rumor is taken into account this market depth indicator has also been recently updated to take into account news from the Fed that it's coming out or anticipated or expected whether it's expected to be good or bad or neutral it takes into account all of those things okay powerful 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 indicator you won't find this indicator on the internet I can tell you that now as a matter of fact you won't find none of these indicators on the internet because unlike its name the positive and negative swing VIX has nothing to do with the volatility index at the Chicago Board of Options it has absolutely nothing to do with that it's way more powerful than that indicator straight up and I prove that as you look at the daily reports matter of fact you, 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 you tell me you show me compare my swing VIX to the volatility index and you tell me which one is more accurate and tell me which one is making you more money I guarantee you the answer will be the swing VIX alright so unlike the volatility index of Chicago Board of Options this is far more in depth than that and more sensitive and you can trade off of it unlike the VIX alright now going back to the market depth econometric model this indicator like I said is all your fundamental data when the news is positive or believed to be or anticipated to be positive it's going to have a one in it all right that means bullish okay or positive when it's negative it will have a zero which means bearish or negative okay a lot of times you'll see that the fundamental analysis is right in line with the technical analysis trend equals technical analysis market depth equals fundamental analysis again the trend indicator is your technical analysis meaning with the trend is either up or down based on the technicals market depth means the trend is either up or down as far as people's sentiment or feelings or beliefs or what is factually known is positive or negative there are times where you will see that it's in alignment like this is bullish this one's bearish then you'll see times when like here 
in the ProShares Ultra Short Lehman 7 to 10 year bond ETF, you see that the fundamentals are not in line with the technicals. The fundamentals are saying we have positive insight regarding this security while the trend and the technicals say uh, uh, the trend is still down. Now what usually happens or follows is this. They normally will eventually come into alignment. That means that either the technicals are going to are going to meet up with the fundamentals or the fundamentals are going to change with the technicals. Being that this is an ultra short is saying that people believe that the bonds should be falling in price, which means yields are going to start going back up. That's what the people believe. The market, this actual security, the way it's trading, though, is doing something else. Okay? Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Can you prove that? Of course. See, if I click this little button right here, it'll bring up a historical precedent for this security. And it goes back, the way it's programmed now, it'll go back for me all the way to uh, May the 14th of this year. And you can look and you can see how th this thing has been trending. As you can see, the trend was down. We started at 48.97, went down to 46.53 went down to 44 went down to 43 and now here we are at 40 and we just hit 41 all right that's saying a lot okay so the security price actually dropped into the 39s when we were back here when we first started we were up here at 60 so you got like you know almost a thirty dollar decline in price truly bearish see trend bearish it's bearish okay it is what it is the charts do not lie all right now can prices and math and numbers be manipulated of course but the numbers in their raw purity don't lie that's what that's what you get the saying numbers don't lie one plus one is always two all right but when man gets involved, we can corrupt things and we can lie, if you will, with the stuff. But the pure, raw essence of the mathematical equations remain constant. All right? So here you go. This is it. All right, moving on. So the way you use these four boxes together is like this. First thing you do is look at the trend. Trend is up. Market depth is also positive. This thing is bullish, both fundamental and technically speaking. Pork bellies on this one is, is highlighted is bullish, okay? That's how you read that. All right, so say I come in today, and now I'm looking to see what I'm going to trade for today. I just pulled up the in-play report. Let's see what we got here. Huh. Let's see. Oh, Citigroup we got here. Let's see. Let's see. Citigroup. Okay. See the group? Oh, right. We got a positive and negative um, pulse wave. So it's set up to do a pulse wave breakout. Oh, go long at 398. Put my stop at 363. This segues into the next group of traders that I had in mind when I created this particular spreadsheet. Long only people. People who are just used to buying something. Doesn't matter if it's in a bear market or a bull market. You're a buyer. You always are looking to buy something. Okay? You can use this report and ignore any short sell signals. Just use the short sell signals to stay out of that particular security and wait until you get a buy signal. It's just that simple. Okay? So, like this here, this is a pulse wave, meaning it could break out or break low. You just buy. Every time you see a pulse wave, you just put in the, the pulse wave resistance buy stop limit order. Likewise, if you get a, uh, a positive or negative PPT situation, you're always looking to buy. So you're always looking for positive PPTs on the secondary signal. You always you don't want to buy off of a negative PPT. You want to buy off of the positive PPT, okay? So if you get a positive PPT, you're always looking to buy the resistance high. And then you use your support low as your stop. Use your pulse wave support as your